everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Yummy Brand of Yummy Crochetology and today's tutorial is this fabulous spider lace shrug that is inspired by Sarah Zenderson of Salem. That's right, witches are back. So I was so fascinated of her outfit in the Hocus Pocus 2 and I was dying. I am dying to make it straight away the moment I saw it in my TV. So there you go guys. I make myself a spider web shrug that is inspired of that beautiful blonde witch Sarah of Salem. So I'm gonna share it with you guys how to make this one and it's very quick and it is very gorgeous to wear this Halloween. And also if you like my content don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give Give this video a thumbs up so if you are like me dying to wear this beautiful shrug so let's get started before we will dive in into the proper tutorial part of the video there are certain parts or points I call them points in this tutorial that I want you to be familiar or at least remember them so that it's easier for you to follow this video the structures of your shrug looks like this once connected okay there are two hexagon in the front two at the back and six each sleeve okay these are the pattern notes first is it is made of hexagon and it is five to and a half inches big and 3.50 millimeter hook is the one we were using for the hexagon second it is joined as you go that's how we will connect the hexagon on the last row of our hexagon Okay, I'll show you how to jig later. And third note is that we will use two to four corners of the hexagons to form the sleeves and also attach the neck panel to our sleeves. Fourth note is that we need a foam, a blocking foam and a T-pin to pin down the pieces of hexagons so we can connect them. Fifth is that we only use chain 5 and a slip stitch to connect the gap. So it's a hole. So we need chain to close that hole a little bit. Sixth is that the chest panel and the sleeve uses again two to three corners and the front post double crochet part of the hexagon. So remember those points and also the materials that you will need for this project. So now we will proceed to the proper tutorial. So again, we will use a 3.50 millimeter hook and we will start with a knot. However, you start with a knot and a chain of five or a magic circle if you prefer a magic circle. And then at the end or the first chain of your chain five, you have to slip stitch. Now we form a circle and that's where we will start working. Now proceed to your next row, make a chain of three. So this chain here is considered or it's count as a stitch. Now make a double crochet into your circle 16. So that's one, two, three, four and five so continue your double crochet around until you reach at the very first of your stitch so we're here at the end of our row right now and make sure you have 17 posts or double crochet and this is my 17th double crochet and slip stitch to our chain one at the very beginning of this row to close this row so this is what it looks like for the first row now chain of five your chain two here is considered as a turning chain or to bring up the yarn and then make a double crochet in the same stitch where your chain five is okay to form a v-shaped stitch then chain one and then on the next stitch you have to make a double crochet okay so in this pattern or in this row the pattern goes chain one and double crochet in the next stitch okay so repeat the pattern of chain one and double crochet around until you reach at the very end 
So we're here at the very end of our row and we will double crochet in the last stitch. Okay. And then chain one and slip stitch to your chain two of your chain five, the beginning of this row. And then you have to slip stitch to the chain first chain one space to start your work there. Okay, so from now on, we will be working on chain one spaces. Now chain of three, and then double crochet in the same chain space. Okay, chain three here is count as a stitch. Now chain three again and make a double crochet, two double crochet in the same chain space. Okay, so you're making the first corner here. So that's our corner. And then chain of two. And in the post just below you, there is a double crochet post. You have to make a front post double crochet in there. Okay, so this post here, you have to insert your hook here. And make a double crochet. Okay, so that's how our pattern goes. Corner, chain two, and front post, double crochet. Okay, so again, chain two, and then make a corner. Corner this time is two double crochet. And then chain of three, and another two double crochet in the same chain space. Okay, so that's how our complete corner looks like. So repeat the pattern of front post double crochet, chain two, and a corner until you have six corners in total. So we're here at the end and we will end this with a chain of two and a front post double crochet. So there is a one post here, this one, and make a double crochet in there and Finish it off with another chain two and a slip stitch to your chain three. Okay, so that's how our rows look like. Now let's go to our next row. Now slip stitch to your chain space. That's where we will be working from now on and make a chain of three and double crochet in the same chain space. And a chain of three. Okay, so we're making the first corner. Again, another two double crochet in the same chain space to complete the first corner. Your chain three here is considered as a stitch. Then chain of two. And front post double crochet into the post below you. So this is the front post double crochet of the previous round. So it should be easy to find that stitch that we are in this row now. So we'll just follow the front post from the previous round. And again, chain of two and the corner. So when the pattern says corner or core, it should be two double crochet. Chain three and two double crochet again. all in the same chain space. So I repeat the pattern of your front post double crochet, chain two, corner, and another chain until you reach at the very end of this row. So we're here at the end of our row five. We will end it with a chain two and slip stitch to your chain three to close your row five. And then you have to repeat the row five again for the last time. So I have here my last row of a non-increase row, which is our row six, and I will end this row with a slip stitch. So overall, this is what our hexagon will look like before we will proceed to the increase row or the row that we will use to connect with the other hexagon. So let's start with our increase row. Again, start with a slip stitch to the chain two space 
from the previous round and then you have to make a chain of three it's the same pattern but this time we have to put two double crochet right after your chain three okay again your chain three here is considered as a stitch so there should be three posts or three stitches right now then chain three and put three double crochet in the same chain two space okay and this is your first corner of the increase row okay so this is the corner so there are three stitches now before we will chain and then another three double crochet this row will serve as your jig row or the ones that we will use to connect with the other hexagon and at the same time this will be the last row and the increase row of our hexagon okay again repeat the pattern chain of two and then front post double crochet into your front post double crochet from the previous round it should be easy right now since we already have a post from the previous round chain two and make another corner so this time your corner will be three double crochet that's one two and three so there's three double crochet now okay and then a chain of three and another three double crochet in the same chain space from the previous round okay so hence this is the increase because we already have three double crochet in our corners continue your pattern of chain two front post double crochet and corner okay again corner is three double crochet chain three and three double crochet again you have to continue that all the way here if you're making your first ever hexagon if not we will continue it or connect it with the other hexagon I'm here at the end and we will end this hexagon with a slip stitch again if you're making your first hexagon you will finish it all the way but if you're making the second and so on you have to leave at least two corners undone okay so I have here now two corners undone because this will be the corners that we will join with the other hexagon we don't need the entire corners to connect the other hexagon we just need two or one okay so now I will show you guys how to connect two hexagons so I have here finished hexagon and the unfinished hexagon so go back to your current hexagon and make a three double crochet in that corner okay there you go and then chain of two get your finished hexagon and slip stitch to any corner you feel like okay we're using corners here remember the points or notes in the pattern we only use corners and front post double crochet now slip stitch to your corner and then make a chain of two and go back to your unfinished hexagon and finish the corner which is three double crochet okay so you put your three double crochet in this unfinished corner of this hexagon so that's two and three so there you go our corner for this hexagon is finished and it is attached to the finish hexagon now chain of two continue the pattern so before you front post in this unfinished hexagon okay so you can see that there is a front post you have to make a slip stitch to the finish hexagons front post okay this front post you have to slip stitch here slip stitch is like putting your hook around the post okay and then yarn over and pull the yarn around the front post of the finish hexagon okay just you just hook around that um, front post of the finished hexagon just to connect them and then go back to your front post double crochet of the unfinished hexagon 
and make a front post double crochet in there. We're still sticking to the pattern of making a front post double crochet to your unfinished hexagon. We just slip stitch to the other hexagon, okay? To connect them both, okay? Now continue the pattern of chain two and go to your unfinished hexagon's corner, this one here, and make the corner in this side, which is three double crochet. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, so there is the first three double crochet, and then again, chain of two, and connect this unfinished hexagon to your finished hexagon, slip stitch to the next corner, okay? You will be able to tell that which one is next, because it just align and make a slip stitch in there. Then chain two. Okay, so they're connected now. As you can see here, the finish and the unfinished hexagon, they're both connected in just two corners. Now continue your unfinished hexagon. Make a three double crochet into that corner. Okay, so there you go. Two corners of two hexagons are connected. And so there's two corners connected and one front post connected. So these are the points that you have to remember when connecting the hexagons. Once you don't have corner anymore, finish your unfinished hexagon by completing it with the pattern. So now we will move to blocking the hexagon. This is how you will block the hexagon. First part or first upper part of your hexagon should form a little like square and only uses two corners of each hexagon. Cut it off and then attach it again to another hexagon using two corners, okay? To form a square and we should have a hole in the middle. In the lower part of your hexagon, there should be one corner attached to these two hexagons just to form that rectangular shape so we can use it as a panel to wrap around your arms later to make it into a sleeves. So you want your blocking to form like a rectangular shape. And then these holes here, we will close this gap or holes using the chain five and the slip stitch. Once you pin down your hexagon, it should be stretched. Okay? And the non-blocked hexagon measures around five and a five and a half inches. And the ones that you blocked or pinned down should measure uh, more than that, okay? Mine is six and sometimes it's 6.5. So the reason with that is you want it to be tight around your arm and so you have to stretch it um, really good. Like you have to stretch the hexagon so you will know how tight your chains when you're connecting these holes when you're adding them. Okay, so stretch your hexagon and pin them down before you will add or before we will close the gap here using the chains because we want our sleeves a bit tight, okay? And if you're making it into a sizes bigger than, uh, shall we say, if you're making it for a medium or large, I suggest that you change your hook size, okay? Keep the chain five and slip stitch, follow that, but change your hook size into a bit bigger, okay? So we will close this gap now and again remember the points that we will be using the corner front post corner front post corner front post corner and front post those are the only points or area that you will slip stitch your um, yarn okay same here in the big gap where there's only one corner is attached um, of our hexagon Again, it's the same. Corner and front post double crochet is the only area that we will use until the hole is smaller. The same way here in this side gap, we will start from the corner, front post, back to this front post here, and then corner and corner, just to form a rectangular shape for our sleeves. So in my sleeve, I size down my hook to three millimeter hook. You can size up your hook if you're using this or you're making it for a bigger size. 
Now secure your yarn wherever you want to start or which corner you want to start. Tie that yarn down and pull a yarn and start your chaining. So chain five. So this is my first chain five. As you've noticed, I already removed my pin in the sides. Okay, and then find your next front post double crochet, slip stitch in there. Uh, there you go. There is a chain five between this corner and that front post double crochet. Now chain five again and find the next corner and slip stitch in there. So again, while working into this area, I removed my D pins um, slowly and we will continue the chaining of five and slip stitch to the next front post double crochet which is this one so you have to pull the hexagon so you can actually um, slip stitch in there in that way you know how stretchy or the stretch capability of your garments again chain five all the way to your next corner so our next corner should be this one here okay and then slip stitch so you have to a little bit um, be tight with your tension um, and also this is a little bit a struggle in this part where we will um, chain and slip stitch because as you can see in the side of our hexagon there are still pins pinning down the hexagon so you're pulling or tugging the hexagon against those pins so you just have to be very very um, a little bit stronger than your pins or you just have to um, fight them and the slip stitch here is also a struggle because again the pin and you are tugging each other okay and continue your chain five so tighten your slip stitch too once you're done with that and again continue your chain five and slip stitch to your next front post double crochet so this is basically the first round or row of connecting the gap okay or closing the gap and then chain five again yeah as you can see here i am really struggling with my chaining because i'm trying to make my chains tight and then slip stitch to the corner where you started so as you can see here there's already a round or a circle so the chain is making a round shape connecting our corners and front post double crochets okay so this time the second row we will only use the corner okay so start again where we are right now so chain five skip your front post double crochet and go to your corner okay so slip stitch to your corner tightly and then chain five again again skip the front post double crochet for your second round in making a circle or connecting okay and tighten that slip stitch chain five again and skip the front post double crochet in this part and go straight to the corner which is this one and slip stitch chain of five all the way back to the corner where you started okay so chain five and slip stitch to the corner that we started again skip the front post now it's done and this is what our second row for this close of the gap looks like now we have to cross so just chain five and make a slip stitch to the corner just across your um where you are okay just make a slip stitch across 
So now this is close and pretty much that's how we will close a gap and we will repeat or do the same thing here in the bigger one, um, the same pattern. And we have to cut off this one here and tighten all those um, yarns or if possible wave them. And then you have to repeat the process of chain five and slip stitch to our points or corners and front double crochet into your second hole, okay? Or the second gap where you only connect the one corner of each hexagon, okay? So it's the same process, start in the corner and then chain five, slip stitch to your front post double crochet and then in rounds okay just follow your corners and front post double crochet around until you reach into the very first corner where you started okay and then on your second round you have to repeat the pattern of chain five slip stitch but this time only the corners okay you will skip the front post double crochet instead you will go straight to the corners until the holes is tiny. And again, if you're making a bigger size for this one, you just have to size up your hook um, here I'm using three millimeter hook, so I guess you will just have to size up to 3.50 millimeter hook or four. It depends how tight or how loose you want your sleeves will be. So now the hole is shot, we will continue the pattern of chain five and slip stitch in each of the side of this panel. Now one of my side is shot, so I will show you guys how I did this part here or close this part here just to form a little rectangular shape, okay? Again the same, start in the corner, tighten your yarn or secure that yarn quite well and then pull a yarn and make a chain of five. But this time we will go straight to the front post double crochet which is this one's here. Okay, so just slip stitch in there again and tighten those chains and stitches and chain five again and go back to your opposite front post double crochet from the opposite hexagon. Okay, so again the same pattern of chain and slip stitch but this time we started with the center corners and then just back and forth across because there's not much to work on in this side. So I end up in this corner here and that's pretty much it. We can cut off our yarn and that's the end of our panel. As you can see here, the panel is actually in rectangular shape and that's what you want for your sleeves panel. You can unpin them off the um, board or the foam. So as you can see, this part here is bigger. So this should be the shoulder area where it's a little bit bigger than the ones here. And this is how you fold your sleeves, right side facing to each other and you are facing the wrong side. And then you fold it this way and place your stitch marker. So we will start here and make sure you have a pointy end at the top. And in this side, I end up putting my stitch marker in this part here because again, I don't need much opening in my sleeves because I'm quite thin in the wrist. And then insert your hook and yarn at the top most. We will start at the top and make a chain of two. So you have to put two single crochet in this chain So you will single crochet in every stitches across and then this one here is a cluster from our hexagon and there's two of them, the ones at the back and the ones in the front because it's a folded panel now. You have to align them and single crochet both panel, okay? Make sure you get the two panel and insert your hook there and single crochet both panel. Since this is a cluster, so there should be three double crochet in this part. So put three single crochets on top of the three double crochet.
Now, this is the chain part of your hexagon. So if you see a chain space, you have to put four single crochet in that chain space. Like so. And again, this is the front post double crochet, which is a stitch. Put one single crochet on top of this both front post double crochet. Again, make sure you, you single crochet both of the panel that is folded. And then again, if it's a chain space, you have to put four single crochet. Okay, so that's how our pattern goes. So if it's chain space, you have to put four single crochets. If it's a stitch, you have to put one single crochet in every stitches. So I'm here and this is what it looks like right now. We're still facing the wrong side and do not cut off your yarn. Finish off your row with a single crochet and do not cut off your yarn. Instead, flip your sleeves and now we're facing the right side. This time we will continue the rows of single crochet in the cuff, okay? So chain one and then single crochet in every stitches around. If it's a chain space, this time you put two single crochet, okay? And then one single crochet in the stitches. Now I'm here at the end, I will finish it off with a single crochet. Okay, so that's our first row of single crochet in the cuff. Now chain one, this time single crochet in each stitches around. This should be easier this time because we already have a foundation of single crochets around. So we're here at the end of our last row for the single crochet row in the handcuff and we will end it with a slip stitch to close this row. Now we will proceed to attaching our neck panel to the sleeves. We will add one more row in the neck panel around in order for us to joint as you go to the sleeves, okay? And these points here where the stitch markers are, are the only points or part of the hexagon that we will use to connect the front panel for the neck, a back panel for the neck panel. So I have here two sets of panel for the neck. So these are the points that you have to remember in attaching the sleeves to your neck panel. So there are two corners and two front post double crochet. Okay, so put the stitch markers in that side and then we will attach it to our neck panel. Do not touch this point. This will serve as your shoulder straps to connect at the back. So you'll just have to align all the points of the hexagons in order for us to connect them. Again, we will add another row to joint as you go. So chain three, this is the start of the row that we will be adding to our neck panel. So the same pattern, but a little bit increase. Chain three this time, and then double crochet three times in the same chain space. So that's your first corner and then we will chain three and front post double crochet. And then since I am going to connect this corner here, so I'm going to chain three, start my corner here, which is three double crochet. And then chain three and connect this to the first corner of your sleeves where your stitch marker is, okay? And make a slip stitch and again, chain three, okay? And go back to your neck panel and continue the corner pattern, which is three double crochet in the same chain space. So, as you can see, our neck and the sleeve is attached in one corner. Now continue the pattern, chain three again, and align the front post double crochet of the sleeves to your neck panel. The same pattern, we will slip stitch the front post double crochet of the sleeves and go back to your neck panel 
and slip stitch into the front post double crochet of the neck panel. Okay, so now the front post double crochet is connected. And then chain of three, and again, this is a corner, so start the corner, which is three double crochet. Chain three, and go to your sleeves, find the next corner or where the stitch marker is, and make a slip stitch in there. Okay, now chain three again and continue your three double crochet to the unfinished corner in your neck panel. So now there are two corners connected and one front post double crochet. Now we will proceed to this front post double crochet stitch marker is in your sleeve. So chain three and slip stitch to the front post double crochet in the sleeve. And then go back to the neck panel where your front post double crochet is and make another front post double crochet in that post. Okay. So now, as you can see here, all the points where your stitch markers are, are all connected. Okay, so we have corners, front post double crochet, corners, and another front post double crochet. So continue the rows that you added to the neck panel until you reach here, and we will attach the sleeves again, and then go back up, and then we will finish this row with a slip stitch to where you started. In this center, we only put one corner. This is two hexagon corner connected, but we will put one corner, okay? So in this part here, this is where two hexagons are connected, so it should have two corners. But this time, we will only add one corner or one set of corner, which is three double crochet. Okay, there's your three double crochet and then chain three and put your second double crochet, set of double crochets in this side. Okay, so in total, it's only one corner. So there you go. And then continue the pattern of your chain three and then front post double crochet and then the regular corner around until you reach where your other side for the next sleeve. Again, there are stitch markers to guide you along the way, the same way what we did in the other side. Aligned each corner, each front post double crochet to your sleeves and attach them and continue the pattern while attaching your sleeves to your neck panel, okay? So now I'm here at the top and all of my sleeves are attached. As you can see here, both sleeves are attached to the front panel of my neck panel. And we will repeat that pattern or procedures at the back. Again, place all your stitch markers into the points or area where we will use as a um, joint as you go. Okay, so in, in at the back, it's a little bit different because we already have here the top this point here of the front panel, okay? We will use this as a shoulder straps, okay? It will be connected to the back panel or the back hexagons. So it should be like this. So there is a point for the back panel or the hexagon, and then we will align them as you try to work your way in this side. So there's the corner and then front post double crochet, another corner here. So this corner should have three um, hexagon connected. So again, I added another row for my back panel hexagon and I will start here at the bottom half of the sleeves going upwards towards the neckline. The same pattern of corners and front post double crochet and attaching it with a slip stitch to your sleeves and back to your back panel okay and now we are here in the corner so we will make the corner which is three double crochet and chain three and then go to your corner in the sleeves okay so our direction is like that going to the neckline 
So slip stitch to your sleeves and then go back to your unfinished corner in the back panel. Make the corner which is three double crochet. Okay, so now they're connected. Again, chain three and continue to the front post double crochet. So they're connected now, the back panel and the sleeves front post double crochet. This time, this is the corner. And if you can see here, there are already three points, the front panel, the sleeves, and the back panel being connected into one spot, okay? So just slip stitch your way in there, make sure it's secure because this is the part where it's very um, stretched out because it's, it's where your shoulder is. And then continue the corner until all the markers or stitches is connected. So I have here my last corner. So this is my last corner for the back panel and this side of the sleeve and connect it with a slip stitch to the front panel. This is the topmost, okay? So I'm creating the hole here. I am small, so I only make chain three. If you're making the bigger size, uh, instead of chain three, make a chain five to make the hole in the center bigger. This is your neck hole, okay? Uh, continue your pattern in this part until you reach into the other side. And this is another way to make your, instead of chaining three, you have to chain five. As you can see here, the hole is bigger if you put chain five, okay? Then the corner is attached. Again, repeat the pattern of connecting all the points in this side until you reach the very end. So do not cut off your yarn when you reach here. We will continue working in rounds. But this time is just to clean the stitches using a half double crochet. So this is the half double crochet row, okay? And you will, your work will be in rounds like so. And then you will cut off your yarn and repeat it in your neck hole, okay? So the neck hole will also have a half double crochet row around it. So this is how we will half double crochet. So chain one and then Put half double crochet, one half double crochet in every stitches. So this one is a cluster. So you put one half double crochet on top of each of these double crochets. And if you re arrived in your chain spaces, you have to put three half double crochets in your chain spaces, like so. Okay, just to even our stitches and clean the edges. And again, this one is the cluster. So you have to put one half double crochet in each of these stitches. So again, your work will be in rounds. Okay, so continue your half double crochet around until you reach at the very end of this row. And you have to repeat this in your neck line. So I'm here at the end of the neck line and out of your yarn now, and your shrug should look like this. And wave the ends. There are so many ends to wave in these projects. And this is what it looks like. I have here some cute embellishments that I want to add. And that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have questions and some clarifications, please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section. And don't forget to visit me in my social medias. You can tag me your work there. And also this code here, you can use this in any of my Etsy um, written pattern if you are keen to check that one. So you can use this code. This is exclusive to all of my YouTube subscribers. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And I hope to see you again sometime next week. Thank you and have a good day. Goodbye.